Hi, you guys. Um, I just want to give you kind of a lecture on um, this chapter, the uh, Byzantine Empire. And this was the PDF file that I found. We're not going to take a test on this chapter. I just want to give you the information. So um, in this chapter, uh, we learned about the Byzantine Empire, Byzantine Empire earlier um, when we talked about kind of the fall of Rome. But um, we had mentioned about Constantinople. So I don't know if you remember him, but Constantinople, um, Constantine, I'm sorry, was the emperor who founded uh, the city. So he named, so of course it was named Constantinople and it was really an ideal location for a capital because it was easy to defend and it kind of lie at the crossroads of many seas and overland trade routes linking the east to the west. So that was why Constantine kind of called, um, created this, moved his capital from Rome to the city of Byzantine, uh, later being called um, Constantinople. Now, during this time period, there was a ruler um, named Just, Justinian. Here we go. And Justinian uh, ruled the Byzantine Empire between 527 and 565. So this is way back before the Middle Ages. That's why I just kind of want to breeze through this chapter quickly um, because it is important, but it's not exactly during this these Middle Ages. Um, but he contributed to the development of the empire by investing in these public works in Constantinople. And he, he won back parts of North Africa, Italy, um, southeastern Spain, and started to create kind of the systematic body of law that he called the Just Justinian Code. Um, and so that's where that this comes comes into play. Now, people started to kind of stand up and revolt um, against him, and he was going to give up. But his wife, Theodora, um, said, don't. <laughs> she said, you know, you're the emperor, um, and you need to stay in charge of Constantinople. So um, she said, you need to put down this re this revolt um, and start to rebuild the city. You got to stop it, rebuild the city, stand up for what you believe in. So if it, people, we really kind of believe if it wasn't for Theodora, um, Constantinople would have been taken over. Um, she's also really known for improving and extending the women women's rights during this time period, which I thought was kind of interesting because it kind of ties into a little bit of women in aviation that even back in, you know, the 500s, women were standing up for their rights. Um, and again, you know, not that long ago in history, uh, women were too and being able to give them the opportunity to fly. And it's not just, um, in, in this case, it, it is women, but, you know, we see over history that there's many people that stand up for their rights. Um, religion and government were closely linked in the Byzantine Empire. Um, here we have the Eastern Orthodox Church. Um, the emperor was believed to be both the head of the government as well as the living representative of God. So kind of like the beginning in the beginnings of feudalism. Um, so the Orthodox Christianity, it really inspired great works of um, architecture, such as the Hagia Sophia, and beautifully painted icons that you see in this picture here. So just to reiterate, the emperor was believed to be both the head of government as well as a living representative of God. Um, which we know, of course, was divided in the Western part of the world under Catholicism, but not with the Eastern Orthodox at this point. So medieval Europe and the Byzantine Empire um, had three main disagreements uh, that led to the conflict between them. One was the policy of what was called iconoclasm, which is basically um, the practice of worshiping icons as if they were divine. Um, so, um, 
in the Byzantine Empire banned their use, and these icons were destroyed. Um, some Eastern Christian religions disagreed, or Christians, I should say, there really was only the Christians, uh, disagreed with the practicing of worshiping icons, um, thus being the Eastern Orthodox people that really didn't like that. So these icons were destroyed, including in parts of Italy controlled by the Byzantines. And um, of course, this made Rome really angry. So some of these like icons would be um, like worshiping maybe the pictures of the Bible or worshiping the cross itself. They looked at it as though you were worshiping an item, an icon, not actually God. Um, and not that that was the case, but that's the way they felt. The next disagreement was on the Pope's decision to crown Charlemagne, remember him, the King of the Franks, as the Holy Roman Emperor. They didn't like that. This outraged the Byzantines, and um, they felt really that they were the rightful rulers of the Roman Empire because they believed, remember, that God and um, the government kind of worked hand in hand. But the final break of the closing of all Byzantine churches that worshipped with um, were um, with the Western rites. So the final break was the closing of those Byzantine churches that worshipped. Um, and the Pope responded by excommunicating the Patriarch of Constantinople. Now, I know I'm not feeling super well, so I'm hoping that I'm communicating this properly to you guys. Um, Let's see. So the biggest, I think the last thing I just want to talk about is the really the division between the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, there we go, the final break. Um, and that's that the churches, the church was finalized when the Pope sent a cardinal to excommunicate that patriarch of Constantinople, who then symbolically excommunicated the cardinal in return. So kind of that concept of, um, Kind of like King Henry and Pope Gregory, when one said, you know, you're excommunicated and the other one said, oh, I'm sorry. Except for in this case, the Roman Catholic Church really uh, finalized um, that the Pope excommunicate the Patriarch of Constantinople, um, which he did. And then um, in return, um, they symbolically excommunicated um, that cardinal, but that didn't really happen. It was just all symbolic. So anyway, um, forgive me for my little bit of rambling. Uh, please look over this lesson summary because it probably will explain this better than I just did, but um, we will talk about it in class. Um, thanks for listening.